Soybean School on realagriculture.com is brought to you by Pride Seeds, BSF Canada, and Syngenta Canada. Hi, I'm Bernard Tobel. Welcome to the Soybean School. Today I am in Arthur, Ontario, catching up with Brad Garlow from Syngenta Canada. Brad, how's it going? Good, good. You, Bern? I'm pretty good. A beautiful day here. A nice field of soybeans here. And good I want to talk about herbicide application today. Um, how do we get good coverage on you know, a crop like this? Um, and I love talking to you because application tips and application is your business. Um, first of all, how important is it to get that coverage, get the stem, get the leaf covered? So in conventional soybeans, the, uh, the post-emerge options like Reflex require really good coverage. Uh, there's not much systemic activity or, or no systemic activity. So coverage is so important to knocking down that ragweed, that pigweed, and covering all the leaves and the stems uh, with the herbicide is, is crucial for a full kill. Yeah, and one of the things that we're seeing more and more is better and better application technology. And we're going to take a look here today at a, the John Deere Exact Apply, you know, program. Uh, lots of nozzles, um, 3D spraying. You really like this. Yeah, so I've been testing different uh, options with customers, customers with Exact Apply, customers with a standard nozzle without the pulsating. Exact Apply brings a lot of benefits, but application here today, uh, covering that whole plant, the ability to use two nozzles per nozzle body, really gets me excited to cover both the stem and the leaf of all these uh, pigweeds and ragweeds. Now you've got some video here that you shot, um, did a little test, some drive-by in the field. Tell us what we're seeing here, and obviously the, the nice coverage you got. Yeah, so what we're seeing here is uh, penetration from the front uh, angled 3D nozzle and then the rear facing 3D nozzle, both covering the, the flat surface of the leaf that's parallel to the ground and also the stem that's that's vertical off the ground. And typically a lot of resprays that I get called out to, it's the application on the stem. So you miss a part of the stem and a new branch grows from that area because you didn't get proper coverage. So a flat fan nozzle previously was probably the main nozzle used. Mm -hmm. and. Uh, Clearly the penetration from the flat fan won't be on an angle, so you're not getting any stem coverage or, or poor stem coverage right. most and of the time. The other thing here is the number of nozzles, 192. I mean, that's got to sort of build up some coverage. Yeah, I mean, a standard sprayer typically is 96, and, and we've got two per nozzle body. I'm not a math guy, but it's 192, just like you said. And uh, having the ability to go forward and backwards on every single nozzle body versus the old style where you're every other nozzle, uh, yeah, I would say doubles your coverage. Yeah. Another thing, I mean, like standard thinking as well, is that is water volume. I mean, whether, you know, you're running through a program or a machine like this, or, you know, any other sprayer, water volume is key. Yeah, we talked about covering the whole plant. The more water, the more droplets you have per acre, the better coverage you're going to get. So we like to stick to that 20 gallons. In some cases with really big um, broadleafs, we'll encourage customers to go to 25 gallons to really increase their, uh, increase their coverage, increase their control. So Brad, let's talk some other tips. Uh, one thing that we've talked about in the past is, is speed, the speed of that machine. Yeah, so mainly the, the biggest factor on speed burn is the faster you go, the less chance those booms have to react to any uh, hills or dead furrows in the in the field. A lot of my customers are using that uh, eight nine miles per hour with the higher water volume. You typically slow down anyway, but the slower you can go and the more consistent boom height. Um, you really really wish these uh, equipment companies would spend more money and time focusing on that boom height because it's so crucial whenever you're trying to get product to a very small weed uh, low to the ground, uh, keeping that boom nice and tight to the ground, and that has a big impact on speed. Hey, final question for you, and that is, you know, something we're hearing more and more about, that is, uh, you know, group 14 resistance to common ragweed. That situation speaks to the need to actually do the application to get it right. Yeah, a, a half dead weed is, is obviously tolerating uh, some of the group 14, so if we can get all the weeds dead, which is definitely a huge task in this, in this application, but the more we can fully kill right to the ground, those ones aren't going to come back and cause any issues for resistance. So a, a true, a dead weed is, is what we want, and, and a half dead weed is what's causing these problems in a lot of cases. Hey, um, great stuff today, Brad. Always great to have you on the Soybean School. Thanks for taking the time. Anytime, Bern. Happy spraying. Mm -hmm. Let's do it.